All right, so we got the front wheel off the uh, Husky. We're gonna do a, uh, we're gonna put a tubeless on this. Grab that. Ciao, buddy. You're in the way, Moto. This is my random drawer of random shit. It's my valve puller. These things are pretty easy. I actually don't mind you know, doing these, which involves a tire change, basically. I'm actually just going to put this tire back on, which is even easier. A brand new tire it is a little harder because they're stiffer. But uh, I've probably done, I don't know how many bikes, pretty much every bike except the YZ has got tubeless on it, so, and I've done them all right here in the garage. I've got this little tire changing machine. It's okay. It's not like great. It's another grossly overpriced thing. It doesn't work all that well, but whatever. So pull the valve stem. It's my buddy right there, Moto. He's such a laid back dog. He's like a Mastiff and uh, Bulldog mix. About 100 pounds, he's incredibly strong. Get that thing down in the bead directly across where you're going to go. Better than using a bucket, but not much. The same thing, just the beginning part's a little bit harder. And if I pop this tube, I really couldn't care less because I'm not keeping it. But if you were planning on keeping the tube, I don't think I'm going to pinch it. But if you did, just be a little careful, a little more careful than I'm being. Take a little bit smaller bites, maybe. Sometimes you have to release one of these levers back in order to get that third bite. And then you Push them back both again. And once you get the first or second bite done, it becomes pretty easy. Now, I do scratch my rims up a little bit. I think that's from a crash right there, but that's from a tire iron. They make these little plastic things, but I just don't really care that much. The rims get chewed up enough by themselves anyways when you ride. On these rocky trails, I get brushy. So I really don't... I mean, obviously I care, but... I don't know. Never enough to buy those little things to try to save the rim. Because I'm sure I would get frustrated and end up not using them anyway. Alright, so we got the... Both sides. Over the edge. Yeah, the rim is totally inside that tire there. I try to do that on the bottom. So I leave the valve and everything right there at the bottom and I just literally push the tire right off. All right, now the next step, I don't know if I'm gonna film this whole thing, but basically you can see there's water and it's wetness in here. So you gotta remove the stock rim tape and then just really clean out. Look that obviously. Just you gotta get it really, really clean if there's any burrs or sharp edges. Obviously you gotta take that down, but you gotta get really clean and you can't use certain cleaning agents because the film or the residue they leave will not allow this new tape. You have to do three three times over with this special tape that Tubeless gives you. Alright, so just show you what I did real quick. I sprayed this. This is a soapy water mixture, just a small amount of soap in there. Don't use a lot because that soap does leave a little bit of a residue when it dries. So just a little bit. Scrubbed it really good with this thing all of the way. I have felt it with my hands for any burrs anywhere. Wiped it dry. 
and then I used my air compressor and really really got it really really dry and then just you know felt it again with my finger just to make sure it didn't feel like there's any residue and there's no more dirt and, but uh, that's what I do to get them done all right so it's basically what you'll need all these parts you can pause that this is the big thing you really need something that's capable of you know an air, air compressor of some kind capable of 120 and I've noticed you know I've got this little cheapo husky thing it's got a max of I think 135 I have it cranked to the max 135 and I have trouble getting to 120 actually in my in my tube so if you set it to the 120 setting and you got one of these cheapo ones I noticed I was only getting to like 90 psi so I had to crank it up all the way and really hold it on there longer than you thought you would have to get it pump up all the way but um here's the instructions uh, they do have a bunch of videos online they seem to get better as they go along as the years have gone and their instructions change but there's so many little like like they give you these little notes saying basically just by the way my instructions that we give you aren't accurate anymore follow these instead kind of thing you know it's just like I don't know I wish they would just spend the money and update the stuff every single time they make a change so there's no confusion whatsoever but um, so we did the basically got the rim prepped for for the tape we have to drill before we actually do the tape on it as well. So, and that's the tricky one. You need an 11 millimeter or 7 sixteenths size drill bit. It's a pretty big drill bit. It's kind of scary drilling into your rim like that. And that's the one thing you guys have to be aware of. Is, uh, you are drilling into your rim and it really can't, I mean, I guess you could put, I haven't tried it, but it, your rim lock might be a little loose going through there if you went back to like a tube type tire is what I'm saying basically so I usually have this fan running I'm like sweating in here just it's with the fan running you guys can't hear this crappy audio on this GoPro so all right so we're gonna drill the rim and then you got to take some sandpaper basically and clean it up and the one important part that I didn't read during the instructions with you but I know this so there's usually on all my KTM rims so far which is the DID Dirt Stars, an older set of Excels that were on like the 16, and then KTM's gone to these off-brand, I don't know what they use now, they're not Excels anymore, but so I have three different types of rims that came on KTM bikes. All of them have a hole, two holes, four spokes apart from each other. So there's the hole, one, two, three, four, there's the other hole. And that's what uh, Tubla says is very, very important. You gotta make sure that you pick one of them, doesn't matter which one, and the other one just needs to be four spokes away. And if there's any more holes around the rim, they do provide you these little things to plug it up with. So I'm just going to do this one. And you got to be careful, guys. Uh, I've noticed, especially with these titanium bits, I tend to put my drill not on the drill setting at first because sometimes it'll get caulked in there. And you probably should drill this out with a slightly smaller bit first, but it's aluminum and you're not going through much just don't let your drill get stuck in there on the drill setting because you can twist up your rim so it's gonna be pretty loud here Don't spray this WD-40 on your on your rim because you don't want anything slippery on here. Oops, almost went into the wrong hole. <laughs> See? You gotta be careful. So get it drilled out, and then be careful where you put in you know, all the metal shavings. You want to make sure you get them all off, so I usually wipe them off, I don't blow it. And you can see there's usually a little lip. There's a little lip right here. I'm just going to take some sandpaper and be real careful and get that out real nice. Kind of run the sandpaper through that and get it real clean. So we'll do that here in a second.
first time around. Second time around, you kind of creep up one edge. The third time around, you creep up the other edge. So you got to get dead center the first time around with this tape. When you get full time around, you just kind of swing over either side, left or right, just a little bit. You do not want to go, I don't know if you can see how much I'm overlapping. It's like, I don't know, three or four millimeters. You just kind of want to go up to the shoulder, but not above the shoulder of this. You'll see when you're in the inside of your rim there. I just pull a little bit. And then I just pat it down real good. And what I actually do after this is I use a little heat from my heat gun. I just kind of go over the whole thing just real easy. And then really pat it down. And that just... Anytime you guys are trying to stick something like a GoPro mount or any kind of... You know, that thick double-sided tape. Not regular tape, but the thick double-sided stuff. Any, anything like that. Use heat. Use a lighter, whatever. Heat act, like, helps activate that sticky ingredient, whatever it is, in the tape. You really get a good bond. Something I didn't mention earlier. I mean, you guys, I would highly recommend read the instructions. I used the instructions the first four or five times I did it. I just followed every step. Alright, there it is. Alright, so now I've found this, you know, we're back at the same spot. Now I actually have to gradually go over to the other side and loop this way now. For this, I'm going to cut the holes where the rim lock and the valve stem go. There's two of them. And I use this little. You hot, buddy? Are you hot? I use this little knife. That's the bigger hole. That one came right out. Guys, it's so much easier if you have a knife like this. I mean, these are perfectly cut holes. And I think that helps. Oops. Next step here is to, uh, they tell you to actually remove valve core. I've actually done it without removing the valve core before by accident and it was fine but let's just follow the directions. You're supposed to leave that little nut on. That was something I was confused about. And the big nut that's on the rim lock, that's a 14, you want to take that off because that goes on the outside of the rim. And they tell you to uh, take it out, and you got to lubricate this with, a, they say, an Armorol 
type product, which is really odd because Armor All makes so many different types of like foaming tire cleaners and stuff. I think what they're talking about is some kind of silicone spray. That's all it is. I use this stuff with Motor X actually. And uh, I've done this on probably 10, eight maybe tubeless changes so far and I still got half a bottle in here. But it's just a real fine spray. And I'm not sure, they don't specify if they're talking about spray this edge or the inside. So I kind of just do both. Because it could just be to help the bladder. If you do the inside, that would be just to help the bladder. To keep the bladder from, I guess, pinching or getting dry in there and rubbing and friction and all that kind of stuff. So, And then if you put it on the outside edge, that would just be to help with mounting it. And I actually give my my rim a little spray of this stuff it just helps it go on so much easier you can just use soapy water too but that's why I use these gloves just because of that silicone spray alright so I lubed up the red thing the, sh the shell whatever you call it and basically just put your bladder back in a little tricky sometimes and now you just need to line up your holes. So here's my rim lock hole. And my bladder holes right here. So slide that. Maybe a little too far I went. That looks pretty good. You basically want to get your rim lock in. They say hand tight. So get that through. That went right in real easy, because that's the right size hole. So you guys know, I don't know if I told you earlier, but 7 16ths is the size bit, or 11 millimeters. I've used, uh, I don't know what size bit it would be, whatever is one size down from a 7 16ths. Um, 3 8 I think that would be. Yeah, 3 8 bit. I've used that and just kind of rounded it out a little extra long, and it works fine. I've done that literally on every single one until this. I actually went and bought those bits from Harbor Freight, so... It won't last long, but I literally just needed that one bit. So that's hand tight. That's in, and I always like to make sure that it went in straight. It's not like kind of crooked, which that looks pretty good to me. And then you're just supposed to put this on halfway. I forget what these things are called. I'm just going to leave a little slack in it. And you can really almost, I've seen like the guy at Kyle at Dirt Bike Channel got this thing almost with his hands. I don't know how the hell he did that, but you can get it pretty far, but then it starts slipping and sliding, so it's a little tricky. It'd be really nice if you had a helper, but I've never had a helper and I've been just fine. I kind of use my body, camera might be a little weird angle here for a minute. But. So I get it as far as I can with my hand, so I'm holding this side with my elbow over here. Let's get this out of my way. I'm basically just using my whole body. The reason it's sliding everywhere is just because there's so much lube on this. But once you get it a little bit of the way, you want to make sure you get over both. You don't want to just pinch one. And this is where most of the rim scratching happens. And it should not take very much effort, guys. I mean, this is, I am barely even using any force to pull that tire iron over. And this might be the last one here. Easy, done. And that took very, very little force, and that's because I used so much lube. Now, I probably should have paid attention to this because that's high. there's no uh, burrs or anything right there, but the rim is scratched, and that's kind of where the rim got hung up there, so I don't know. All right, guys, so one thing, if you read the directions, you'll notice it says only use on a new or previously unmounted tire, it says. Um, this tire is not new, and it has been previously mounted. Alright, so that's when that thing goes. Put it right down there, and you start with your rim lock down. And I like to sit on the tire. Because it lets me squeeze and kind of open up that down there. I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see. So I got the rim lock in. I'm going to squeeze the tire and really get the tire pushed all the way in. Sometimes I start rolling it forward. There it is, look at that. Slipped right in. 
people struggle getting that thing in so hard sometimes and it's once you get it that first time or two it comes pretty easy and this is the part that I kind of just do old school on the ground a lot of people probably do this the right way but come on A little bit of bite, but so that's one side. So I just do that one on the ground, and then I put it on this. Use this thing to hold my bead. And the key is just don't go too far in. You don't want to go really far in and then pull, because that's how you pinch things. Especially when you're doing regular tube. Just take really tiny bites. That's all it is. And the last little bit is always the hardest. Really key, just take small bites. entire thing I'm going to show you how much soapy water you're really supposed to use guys because it's a lot it even says more than enough is better than not enough so I just kind of push it down the bead and I really so I do that about every four spokes just a ton and then I flip the tire over and I do the exact same thing again Alright, so don't forget to add your valve stem back in. I got my air compressor over here pumped up to, uh, I don't know, maybe 120-ish, 125 maybe. And then just watch, look at the tire. I mean, a lot of soapy water, but you're going to see. It's not on the bead, clearly. So just watch it. Just instantly pops onto the bead. And you can see all that excess soapy water is just coming right out. See it coming right out. And I'm probably going to need to keep my compressor running to get this thing completely to uh, the correct pressure. Let's see. Got this little thing. So 101.5. So yeah, I mean, I got to turn this thing back on. Obviously, and I can do it with the camera on, but it's loud as shit. But um, yeah, you need it. I think the front one you want to be at. Uh, I want to say it's 120. This one's 110, sorry. The back one maybe is the one that's 120. So I need about nine more PSI in there and I'm good to go. I usually put just a little extra because you do lose one or two PSI per day. And that's the one thing that is a pain, especially if you don't have a compressor 
it's capable of that that you t can take with you. I actually have like a, this DeWalt portable thing that runs on a 20 volt battery and it goes up to 135 just like that. Just doesn't have a huge tank, but um, works perfectly fine, you know. And I usually just set my stuff the night before I leave. Um, if I was going on a long trip, I wouldn't even worry about it. Honestly, you would last two or three days just fine. It's not a big deal at all. Um, but you, if you leave it sitting for weeks and weeks, months even, you know, you will have to refill the air uh, before you, you ride it again. So that is one thing to think about. But um, so now, you know, I'll just put a little bit of air in the actual tire itself. Measure that. That's six PSI, I'll put a little more. But this is a front tire, so I'm gonna run about 10 in my front. So yeah, I was at 11 PSI, so uh, I'll probably let a little out, but. Ten PSI, perfect. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. It's not hard. And now going forward, and I'll clean this up. But going forward, it's to change a tire is really easy. I don't struggle with it at all. And I used to hate hate changing tires. And I'm the kind of person that like I'll watch a YouTube video and pretty much anything I've learned how to do, I've learned from all you guys that are on YouTube putting all these videos out. So appreciate that. But I just, I can't stand having to pay somebody to do work on my bikes, you know? They're so easy to work on, like, so these new cars, yeah, I get it, but these motorcycles are so easy, and it just kills me to have to pay somebody, especially change a tire, I mean, like, come on, you know? But I would pay people to do it just because I hated doing it so much, especially in the summertime when it's blistering hot outside. There's nothing worse. For $25, I'd rather not suffer, you know? But uh, this, I can do this no problem. If I keep my fan on, I don't even break a sweat, guys. It's easy. It's that easy. But I, in the handling of these things, is just, once you feel it, it's, I don't know how much better it really, really is. It just makes the bike feel more plush, I guess. I don't know the right way to describe it. It's just, uh, it's nice. Um, it's hard to, hard to describe. I was just reading the directions again. Um, it's weird, some of them say 110, some say 120. I'm not sure if it's front and back, because the directions are identical for the front and back, other than the fact that one of them says 120, one of them says 110. And I'm uh, not really sure which one's which, or if one's just older, I don't know. But um, I went to go find the Torx back, and it's nine foot-pounds. I feel like I saw 11 foot-pounds on another one. But I will do 10, just to be safe. Whoops. So set to 20. So that's Newton meters to foot pounds. So 10 foot pounds. And this is for the rim lock, guys. I don't know. I just recently started torquing stuff. Not really that much of a pain, especially now that I have this digital one. There we go. 